Who are the important people of the world? Who are the powerful, the significant? Well, we usually think of presidents, of dictators, of generals, of millionaires, of philanthropists, somebody who has an extensive external power. But from the perspective of God, that's not the case. And we see this in today's first reading. Sodom and Gomorrah was literally hell on earth. And Abram asked God, well, if even there's a handful of just decent people there, will you spare the city? And God says yes. Forty years ago, when I was a seminarian, I knew a middle-aged nun who ran a pool hall in Detroit to give the young people some place to go to get off the streets, to be advised by her, scolded by her, and protected by her like a mother hen. But she'd always start her day to go out to Belle Isle, a beautiful island in the middle of the Detroit River that is just opposite the skyline. And she'd say her morning prayers there. And one day, she met an elderly black man who said, I, wonder what, what, I wondered what kind of woman you were. Then I saw you open your Bible, and I knew you had to be a Christian woman. And he had a night job, but going home to work, he would always stop at Belle Isle to pray for the city he loved. And he had been doing that for like 40 years. So he had these two prayerful people praying for the city a city in chaos like all great urban centers, a city where there's every type of vice, a city in which there needs to be the light of God. And these two people in their prayers would hopefully be just a part of a larger group of people praying for that great urban center and preventing even further chaos and hell to reign on earth. Who is the power, who are the powerful people in our world, in our midst? Maybe one of the most powerful is in this chapel. If the person is a profoundly prayerful person, maybe it's a Carmelite sister down in Canton, Ohio. Perhaps it's someone who's too sick to even get out of bed, but is saying his or her rosary right now for the sake of the world that needs prayers. Prayer is so powerful that they hold back the chaos. And we won't know who those people are until we really and truly step into the next life. Now, sometimes when I am giving a talk on prayer, especially to children, I start by saying, well, I know God's 800 number. I know his cell phone number. They say, wow, you do? Yes. I say, it's in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> but in our prayer, in our prayer life, God always picks up on the first ring. We're never put on call waiting. We never get a message, your phone call is really important to us. <laughs> We'll get to you at our next available representative. You don't get that. You're immediately in contact with the divine. We as human creatures could speak to the creator of all things visible and invisible as a part of the fabric of our being. And that is something amazing. Now, we're not the only ones that do this. In the biblical writings, you'll see a reflection of all creation according to its own nature, giving praise to God. The trees, the oceans, the sea creatures. You'll see that reflected in the Psalms, etc. And so all of the created world is singing a song to God. When Jesus is entering Jerusalem for the last time and everybody's singing Hosanna in the highest, and some of the Pharisees say, don't you think you should calm them down? Jesus said, the rocks under our feet are about to sing out. And so we are part of this creation to return praise to God. 
Now, generally, uh, people around the world that even have a vague understanding of God uh, dial a different number, it's sort of like 911. <laughs> They dial up God in a time of emergency. When everything is cushy, everything's going nice, uh, there's no big crisis, God's way in the background. But all of a sudden, you get a bad report from your doctor or someone you love does. Or you had worked for years at one factory. You thought you had a secure life and now the factory's closing. When someone else suddenly is doing something just horrific with their life, plunging into drugs or alcohol, and you want to pull them back, then there's the 911 call to God. And God receives those calls too. And yet we need to be more in touch with God rather than just at times of crisis. In good times, we should be praising God and thanking God. Generally, if we look at the types of prayer, we have prayers of petition, prayers of praise, prayers of thanksgiving, and prayers of lamentation. And if we divide it up how many were in line, the prayers of petition are the bulk of them, and the others are much smaller pieces of the pie. When we pray for somebody to be cured of an illness and they get better, we say, oh, thank God, and then we go quickly about our lives, even though we might have prayed every day for a month or two months for that cure, rather than for the next two months saying, thank God for our health, thank God for the recovery of the person that I care about, and saying that over and over, maybe for the rest of our life. He or she was close to death at age 40. Now it was still with me at age 60. Thank God for that. Thank God for that to call God when we're in trouble and to call on God when our, the blessings of our life are all falling into place. Now, Jesus, in today's gospel passage, he's praying intensely, quietly, and his apostles are watching him. He's in the deepest communion imaginable with his heavenly Father. And when he finishes... They say, teach us to pray. Now, this is so important. You could learn prayer from your parents, and we all do if we're born into a religious family. Uh, my parents taught me how to fold my hands, how to make the sign of the cross. My father tried to teach me the Hail Mary in Slovak. That failed. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't say the first word. It had to come from the deep in the throat. And, uh, but... You know, we could learn prayer that way. But where we ultimately learn prayer is from the Spirit of God that we invoke, the Holy Spirit. That's the one that opens us up to our divine teacher, our divine master. And so we, whether we're at age six or at age 66, we should be saying, Lord, teach us to pray. And he comes back with the Our Father, who art in heaven. And if we say that on a daily basis, we won't go too far wrong in our life. If we ask for the Holy Spirit, we'll get it. If we ask for fame, riches, or fortune, that's like asking for the snake or the scorpion. The Father won't give us that. But if we ask for the bread of life to be nourished on our pilgrimage, we could be assured those prayers are always answered.